OMG, the steam on that. Beautiful. What's up guys, it's Kayla, and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. So I don't know about any of you other fellow graduates, but from time to time I like to look through all my notes and books and handouts and stuff that I got from school, and you know, relive the good memories, laugh at all of the funny notes that I had written like, physics sucks, and why do I have to learn Ohm's Law for a fourth time, and do I really have to do this differential equation in my scientific writing class? What the heck? Anyways, so there I was using my Saturday morning to flip through all my old notes, kind of brushing up on my skills, you know, because I don't know, maybe one day I actually will need to know the difference between the light refraction rate in water droplets and ice crystals. You never know. As I was flipping through, I noticed that there are actually a lot of cool facts that I wrote down that I haven't looked back on yet. And these are some interesting meteorology and weather facts that you guys probably didn't know. So today, I will be listing the top 10 most intriguing and mind-blowing meteorology facts. Alternately called 10 impressive meteorology facts that you can brag about to your friends and sound really smart. So, brownie points for that. Number one is a fact that I was upset to learn when I first discovered it. And this is that raindrops are not shaped like raindrops. They're actually shaped like hamburger buns. This actually makes sense, you know, because something that's a sphere wouldn't stay a sphere when it's falling at terminal velocity. Logically, you can be like, oh yeah, you would think that it'd be flat on the bottom because of air resistance and all that, but... But raindrops are supposed to be raindrop shaped, so... Number two is that the word tornado was actually illegal to use until the 1950s. This is because up until that point, nobody really knew what they were doing with weather forecasting, and if they were to forecast, oh my goodness, there's gonna be a tornado today, maybe, people would be like, oh my gosh, we're gonna die, there's a tornado coming, we don't know what's happening, we don't know how to predict it, we don't know what to do, we're gonna take shelter, we're gonna drive everywhere. Drive? Yeah, drive, there were cars. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So basically people were like crashing and dying and going into panic and like packing up their belongings and their sheep and their children and everything and getting the heck out of town, which actually put them in more danger because now they're out and about and nobody actually knew where or when this tornado would form. So if it did form, it would catch people off guard and it was just a big mess. So the government decided to ban the word tornado from being used so that people didn't freak out. Then once we got better at forecasting, we could start using the word tornado again. We had to earn the privilege of using the word tornado. Fact number three, there is a phenomenon called Virga, which happens when it's raining from the clouds, but the rain doesn't actually hit the ground. This happens when there's enough moisture in the clouds for it to start raining, but the atmosphere below the clouds is so dry that once it starts raining, the atmosphere below it just sucks all the moisture out of the rain and the rain stops before it can reach the ground. This creates this really weird, like, tendrily looking thing underneath the clouds. It's like, what in the world is that? It's not raining, but it looks like it's raining, but it's not raining. It's super weird. Fact number four is that ice crystals are always six-sided or hexagonal. No stop signs. This is something that my physical meteorology professor ingrained in each and every one of us every day for about a month. Ice crystals are hexagonal, they're not stop signs, they're not stop signs, ice crystals don't tell you to stop. So when I was reading over my notes, it was just a bunch of no stop signs or stop signs with X's through them and creative things like that instead of actual notes, you know. Star student right here. Fact number five, you've probably seen a double rainbow, but have you seen a quadruple rainbow? These actually exist and they're called quaternary rainbows. You can also have a triple rainbow and that's called a tertiary rainbow, which is a tongue twister to say. Although these quaternary rainbows exist, a lot of times they're way too dim for us to actually see with our naked eye. This is because rainbows form by light refracting into a raindrop, bouncing around a few times, and then being displayed out in a million different colors, but all the light doesn't go out of the raindrop on the first time. 
Some of it stays in and it bounces a second time, that gives you a secondary rainbow. It bounces a third time, that gives you a tertiary rainbow. When it bounces around that fourth time, it gives you the quaternary rainbow. But because light is lost each time it bounces around in the raindrop, it loses that intensity that you normally see with, you know, a primary and a secondary rainbow. So there has to be a huge raindrop and enough light kept in that raindrop to be displayed out the fourth time in order to see this mysterious fourth rainbow. But it's possible, and I'm sure there's a picture out there somewhere. Fact number six is that the radar was not actually invented until World War II. This means that any time before like 1930 something, we had no idea what was going on. And media outlets who broadcasted weather and stuff to the public did not start using these radars until I believe 1969, which is crazy late. That's like the generation before us, basically. And before that, there wasn't weather radar. I can't wrap my mind around that. What, what, how? Uh. Could you imagine living in today's day and age and not knowing what the weather was going to be? Or like being able to see the precipitation coming on the radar? Because I can't. That's... That's weird. Fact number seven is that heat lightning isn't actually caused by heat. Heat lightning is just regular lightning that you can't hear the thunder to either because you're too far away or because of the way that the sound acoustics are bouncing around in the atmosphere, you might actually be underneath the sound wave and miss it entirely. There's a bonus fact for you. Since the atmosphere is technically like a fluid, the sound acoustics bounce around real weird and sometimes you can be standing like next to something that's making a sound, but the sound wave goes over your head and you miss it completely even though you're right next to what's making the sound. But this has to do with lapse rates and inversion layers and a bunch of stuff that I'm not gonna go into. So, half a bonus fact. Cool fact number eight is about those pesky wet road mirages that we all see in the summertime. You know when you're driving down the road and you slam on your brakes so you don't hide your plane on this random puddle even though it's a sunny day and it turns out to be absolutely nothing and you're just left wondering what the heck. Am I going crazy? No, you're not going crazy. This is called a wet road mirage, and it happens when there is an extreme temperature gradient and density difference. Because the black pavement is super, super, super hot, the air above it, although it's still hot, is much cooler in comparison. This creates a very tight temperature gradient within like a foot. Because denser, cooler air likes to be on the bottom and heat rises, it creates this really small area of inversion where the temperature gradient and density difference makes this optical illusion. Basically, light has a hard time going through this weird area of the atmosphere compared to just regular areas of the atmosphere. And this causes a mirage. This also happens in deserts and out over the ocean, but you probably can relate to the road one a little bit more than being stranded in the desert or lost at sea. Maybe. I don't know your life. Maybe you've been stranded in the desert or out at sea. I'm not one to judge. That's cool. Fact number nine that'll probably blow your mind if you're in the northern hemisphere currently, but the Earth is actually closest to the sun in January. You would think that the Earth would be closest to the sun in the summer because it's hottest in the summer, but seasons actually have to do with the tilt of the Earth and not how close the Earth is to the sun. And this is why you can still get a sunburn in winter, folks, so wear your sunscreen. Fact number 10 is probably my favorite and it has to do with lightning. Lightning is the atmosphere's natural way of discharging static electricity from the atmosphere to the ground. This static electricity forms when ice, water, and dust particles all bump into each other and mess up the electrical charge in clouds, then you have bigger and bigger clouds, more storms, yada yada yada, and lightning happens. But what would happen if there was no more lightning? If all of a sudden it stopped lightning everywhere on Earth, the imbalance charges will build up and build up and build up all over the atmosphere, and in about five minutes, it would create like this huge electrical storm that would just like blow up the earth. Five minutes! That's like from the time you started watching this video until now the earth would have already been doomed. Absolutely crazy. What in the world? Thank God for lightning, am I right? <laughs> so there we have it. There are 10 mind-blowing facts about meteorology and fun weather facts that you can impress your friends with. Now that you know these facts, I challenge each and every one of you to go up to one of your friends and tell them one of these facts and then comment below what the reaction was. Also, let me know how many of these facts that you already knew and how many were completely mind-boggling. Like the raindrop fact. I'm still not over them being hamburger shaped. They should be raindrop shaped. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below so that you never miss another Meteorology Monday. Also, follow us over on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, I'm Kayla. Thanks for watching and happy impressing your friends with 10 random meteorology facts.
why do I have to learn Ohm's Law for a fourth time?